Hello everyone, I'm Yamino, the artist of Sister Claire, and I'm joined tonight by... The one, the only, the incredible, the indelible, Ash Barnes. I write the missing moments and I help Eleanor write the comic. I also make really bad decisions. I have a sour gummy worm in my mouth and it's making me drool. Hey, oh, you're not sharing them with me. I'm so sorry. Here, have a few. I want some before I eat my big red gum tea. <laughs> and I drink my big red gum tea. Well, there's enough tea chum in this that I could probably eat it as well. Ooh, California Naturals. <laughs> I know. These are organic, gluten-free gummy worms. Oh, wow. It's still mostly corn syrup, though. Well, oh my god. Don't be picky. <laughs> it's candy. thought they'd be made of tofu or some shit. Well, you <laughs> know what? You just can't have everything. I'm so sorry. I'm drooling so bad right now. <laughs> like, my salivary glands are, like, spraying my mouth. <laughs> oh, God. Power washing your mouth. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you should do another one of those studies, Ash, where you have to drool into it, too. Can make big bucks. Mm. Mm. So, Sefi and plenty of others want to know what this is going to be. Um... I think I'm going to go with a Claire and Marie picture. Yay! Somewhat fall themed. I'll figure it out as I go. Oh, hi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where's Laura? She's not here. Where's my sweet girl? <coughs> She's gone. <laughs> Jesus. Flame Rider wants to know... Um, what type of gym Clementine would be? Hmm. I don't know anything about gems or rocks, so I can't really say. I wish Gemologist was here. She could probably tell us. I'm pretty sure Gemologist is here. Oh. Um, yes, yes. Gemologist is here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's. Hmm. I also don't know anything about gems, gemstones, so I'm not the right person to ask. She'd be an orange one. <laughs> <laughs> no, she could be a fusion, and she could have one where each of her horn nubs is. Okay. <laughs> Inventive. And that's what I think about that. Oh, that's an interesting question. Matt says, Ash, Elena, have you guys ever thought about making Sister Claire t-shirts? Oh, yes, I have. But I have not thought about, like, printing and stocking them myself because it's a nightmare. Um, but it might be possible to make Claire shirts through um, Hive Works. I've just never been able to come up with a design that I really liked enough. Mm-hmm. My favorite kind of t-shirts, one that I would want to buy if I could make them, would be those print all over kind. Mm. But I'm not really sure of a, a way to do that on demand. At least not that would be really affordable for most people. Mm -hmm. They tend to be very expensive. Ridiculously so, I think. <clears throat> mm. Whew. Gemologist says, um, in reply to the gems question, that depends if you want to go based on color scheme of Clementine or personality, because certain gems represent things. Uh, Sefi wondered if coral would count, because anthery. Uh, Gemologist said, coral counts. It's an organic gemstone. That cool. I mean, doesn't gem just mean a precious rock? Like... Or is there, like, a scientific definition of what a gem is? I'm sure there is. I just don't know what it is. Well, I'm a gem. My teachers told me so. <laughs> <clears throat> this is my favorite part. 
I have this transparent Tivana tea maker that I got because they're going out of business, so everything is cheap. And uh, my favorite part is after the tea steeps in the transparent canister and then you set it on your cup and the pressure of it being put on your cup makes it all pour out <laughs> down into the cup. And it's just, it's very delightful to watch. Very satisfying. Yes. Almost as satisfying as power washing our disgusting front gate today. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen the video of that that I posted on social media, you should really check it out because it's, I think even just watching the video having not been there, it's therapeutic. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe not. There's Lava. I'll turn my vibrations off. Yes. Lava, lava. <clears throat> um, Ryan said. Power washers are like what you wish the Mr. Clean magic eraser was. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, um, Matt says, ooh, is this like a selfie sort of wallpaper? Sort of, if Claire was throwing the camera into the air, like... <laughs> is she going to have both hands up? Yeah. Hmm. You know what? They're using a drone to take this picture. Mm. Oh, no, no. I have been only half-jokingly pestering Ash lately that I really would like a drone. They just, they seem so fun. They're so expensive. It would have been really cool to have one before we went to Iceland. I saw a guy making a video of the glaciers with a drone, and it was just... So National Geographic. Mm. What just happened? Why are there a bunch of little pink lines the everywhere? Photoshop is shit in the bed on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it when I say that. I save it for special occasions like right now. It's It's one of my favorite expressions because like I mean, I know no one wants to think about this, but, like, shitting the bed is hilarious if it's not <laughs> you doing it, and it's just really funny. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, probably... Did you come up with this, or is this, like, a southernism? What? Oh, if something shit the bed? Yeah. I don't know if it's a southernism, but it's certainly something I've heard around um, the south. <laughs> this looks weird. Yeah, I don't really like her with her arms up. Oh. I don't know what to do. I'm deleting it all. <laughs> okay. Well, Honestly, that was that was um fresh. <laughs> hmm. I think I'm having an idea. Okay. Aw, oh, Sefi said, ooh, 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 idea! Marie braiding Claire's hair. That's cute. Yeah, that could be cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Polly Puppy says, question, since I'm pretty sure we're going to get the answer soon, did Catherine continue the lie to the trio about Throne of Mare? So that way Oscar could find her, since it'd be hard to communicate when she would be turning into Grim Cat soon. That's a good thought, but no. In all honesty, like, Catherine has mostly been lying by omission here about Throne of Mare. Like, Catherine thinks it's a bad idea to go, but neither she nor Oscar 
truly know the state of the city at this point. Oh, look at this picture. It's very pretty. They know that it's been sealed off by the garrison, but then again, that's only what they've been told. Neither of them have seen it. Hmm. I'm not really finding a picture that's what I had in mind, so I'm just going to kind of try to draw it anyway. Okay. Sefi says, hmm, so did Catherine kind of want to see how it was? That and she thought, she was expecting, okay, this was Catherine's thought process. She was expecting Oscar to rendezvous with them a little sooner. She was expecting... Oscar to be more the voice of reason to the twins and for all of them to travel together somewhere else and make a new home outside Mercy since the situation in Mercy was about to get really tenuous. So she thought, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut, wait for Oscar, and then we can work as a team to get these children somewhere that isn't as... closeted as mercy, maybe. At least get them somewhere else. <clears throat> hmm. Mm, Artsy is asking, is our P.O. box back up? I need to check on that, dear heart. I have not had a chance yet. I'll try to do that ASAP. I mean, have we paid for it? Yeah, it's okay. been paid for. Okay. But, you know, she said she sent something to us and it got returned. Oh. And I want to make sure it's active. Yeah. <clears throat> Hmm. Proxy says, you've gone back and changed the first book to fit what the story became later on. If you could go back and start over from scratch, would you? And if so, would book one be even more different? Yeah, I think so. But would you start over again, Eleanor? I mean, if I could pay somebody who drew exactly like I do now to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, if it was affordable, but, <clears throat> or if I could just go back in time and tell myself, hey, actually, this is the way the plot's going to go, so mm -hmm. maybe stick to it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <Why? clears throat> but at this point, hell no. <clears throat> That's eight years in the making. I'm not willing to spend any longer revising things. I want to move on. Mm -hmm. Polly Puppy says, how was Cat expecting Oscar to find them then? Or was that the point? Cat is bad at plans. <laughs> the thing is, like, Oscar's rather good at tracking herself. Um, she was trained to do that in the guard. She's not used to doing it over tons and tons of open country, but Catherine would have also been leaving her signs. Uh, there, there was something in the script about it, but I can't remember why, if there wasn't time or something, but... Originally, we were planning to show Catherine leaving signs for Oscar. Yeah. 
there just there ended up not really being uh, a good opportunity to show it. Like Oscar was not the focus of those particular scenes, and it would have been rather hard to show in the background. So we ended up kind of cutting that. But <laughs> Matt said. <clears throat> I think she was relying on Olga's tracking. No, she did not anticipate Olga would be coming after them, at least not far. Hmm. Polly Puppy says, But why the witch trial when we now know pretty much everyone there is a witch? There's a big difference between nuns who use their magic under certain circumstances and a witch is something that you identify yourself as like there are magic users and there are people who call themselves witches mm -hmm. it's kind of like an ideology or an alignment not just being someone who has magic mm -hmm. and there's a lot of double standards for people who use magic to catch witches <clears throat> There's also, too, the thought that when you consider who is largely in control of the nun side of things right now, you know, that's Mother Abraham. The trial could also be construed as the Abbey's way of keeping up appearances. Mm -hmm. Although Marguerite was actually, like, yeah. wanting it because she was in the throes of extreme paranoia. Yes, that's true. But, like... The others went along with it both to placate Marguerite and to demonstrate, you know, hey, we're an actual Abbey. We, we do stuff that Abbeys do and don't burn us down. Huh. We've got a name, and it's a man's name, too. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a name. It's a, it's a religious one, too. <laughs> How's this look, though? Kind of more environmental than... You can do pretty lighting effects and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like it. Arwen Trow says, there is something I need to share with you all. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, that's a good question. Flame Rider says, Elena, is there a way I could download the 3D of, Clemen of Clementine's Horns? Uh... I could put the file somewhere for download and post it on Patreon as a link. I don't know <coughs> if it's openable with other programs besides the one I use to make it, which is SketchUp. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I can try to make that happen. I'll try to remember tonight. Oh, Matt uh, offered you the solution to um, to like make it make that 
thing downloadable to other people with other programs. The 3D thing. Yeah. He says, Elena, you can save objects as .obj, and that should work for other programs. In SketchUp, I can... Or Sculptress, rather? Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. I'll try it. <clears throat> Pulling up my handy dandy reference sheet. <laughs> Oscar's so glamorous. There's one person missing from this. Can you tell who it is? Chat, I mean, help Ash. I mean, I know who's missing. You do? Yeah. Who's it? Ozzy. Yeah, <laughs> it's Ozzy. She's the only one I haven't designed yet because we haven't uh, planned for her to show up yet. So I mean, <clears throat> she will be there. She mm -hmm. is with the crowd, but um, we haven't gotten to a part in the script yet that has her. So I was drawing everybody else first. <sighs> That's a song that I always think of when I'm drawing Claire with like plant things around her. That's a song I imagine Catherine would have sung to her a lot. Change the key. I did. Well, yeah, sorry. I'll share with you all the happiness I found, a reflection of the love in your eyes. And I'll sing you the songs of the rainbow, whisper of the joy that is mine. All the leaves will bow down when you. And morning bells will chime. Here I am, drawing a character getting <clears throat> her hair braided, having never braided my hair, <laughs> having never had anybody braid my hair. Well, that's not true. I think Sarah's braided it once or twice, but like, I really don't know what it's supposed to look like having only been very occasionally on the receiving end of being braided. I'm just <clears throat> gonna hope it looks right. Brother Nerd says, finally remembering one of the myriad of questions I have. What was the economic style of Eden? How do you mean? 
like capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> it was medieval capitalism. If you're talking about did Eden have its own currency, uh, you know, that's something I need to think about more. I've never thought about Eden having its own currency. I, like, I guess my mind assumed it would be a, quite a bit of a barter system. In the Sister Claire world, they use bottle caps just like in Fallout. Because <laughs> it's a post-apocalyptic world. Mm. Well, I mean, Throne of Mata has money. It has its own kind of money. You've designed it, remember? Yeah, it's bottle caps. It's not bottle caps. <laughs> <laughs> so you just answered your own question. They do have their own currency. Well, that's Throne of Mare. I don't know if that translates to Eden. Oh, sorry. I've just heard you sing Throne of Mare every single time. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, like, I've always imagined that quite a bit of Eden's markets run on more of a barter system. Uh, where personal craftsmanship and magical talents and the exchange of, like, goods that people can make and services that people can render are exchanged rather than currency. But I hadn't thought much farther than that, so... So they're kind of a socialist system. Is that even... No, I don't even think that would be called socialism. That's even more extreme. Hmm. <clears throat> Not that I consider socialism to be an extreme. Yeah. Point. I mean, Clementine's <laughs> system is extreme. They use Bitcoin. <laughs> They're a post currency system. <laughs> Brother Nerd said Eden could have theoretically uh, used Throne of Mari's currency due to their closeness, both literally and figuratively. I mean, I'm sure that some people did accept petals and roses there. Um, I'm just imagining it being like Clementine's version of currency is do what I say or else. <laughs> She's not like that, though. <laughs> That's like the opposite of Clementine. I know. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're as strong as Clementine, who needs money? Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's a really nice city you have there. It'd be a shame if somebody broke it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I I mean <clears throat> it'd be a shame if overnight it just turned into a forest with a lot of rubble in it. Yeah. Hmm. Matt said, I always thought Eden was based on trades of goods and services. Yeah. Like I said, um the fact that Eden is it's not, it's not entirely magic users in Eden, but that the population is heavily skewed toward magic users, which is an anomaly in all other kinds of civilizations, at least in the sense that they would be allowed to use what they can do to exchange things. <clears throat> they wouldn't have to go through all the, the red tape and bureaucracy of getting special permits and having to only set up stalls in certain places at certain times while following certain rules. <clears throat> Matt said, there probably aren't a lot of jobs in Eden due to Clementine's influence. No maintenance, not much city cleaning, infrastructure's taken care of. No, that's, that's not true. Like, Clementine built the city, but it takes a lot to keep a city running. I'm sure there are certain things that that sort of run on their own to a point. However, 
remember that Clementine's own personal resources are not infinite. They're not. Not only, you've seen in the most recent missing moments, uh, evidence of one of her largest endeavors. Think of all the gardeners you would need <laughs> to keep that <laughs> shit pruned. <laughs> Especially when she goes on a trip. <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> um, I think... Hmm. The thing that I'm referen referencing, though, like one of her biggest endeavors uh, was that creature y'all saw in Eden. Um, <laughs> That's the janitor. It just eats all the garbage in the city. <laughs> Come on. But that, that took a lot of her own personal resources. If you've been reading The Missing Moments closely, then there's been some indication that something happened to Clementine after she helped the twins. So, like, bearing those things in mind, this, like, Eden itself has to be taking a toll on Clementine. Um, <clears throat> so, not to mention, like Elena said, what happens when she leaves? It has to be able to run on its own, at least, somehow. I just had this vision of, you know, in the original Fantasia, when Mickey Mouse decides to clean with the brooms, and yes. Clementine comes back home, there's trees, like, <laughs> just growing out of everything, and <clears throat> it's all out of control. She rolls up her sleeves quickly and... <clears throat> breaks all of the trees like the brooms. <laughs> no. uh, makes Catherine put the Mickey Mouse hat back on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, people definitely did have lots of jobs in Eden. A lot of those jobs, though, um, were more social jobs. Think about how difficult it would have been to put these people, like... There's so many different kinds of people from all different walks of life here, all these witches, some of which have lots and lots of power, some of whom have not much power, but a particularly interesting brand of power. I mean, you've got people like the Pipers running around who have, on any given day, legions of animals following them. You've got wolf witches, you've got weather witches, you've got people who used to be mages who have defected, you've got people like Clementine who can manipulate plants. You've got that girl who can, you know, use her fingernails to make <laughs> castles. Yeah, yeah. You've got... Uh, you've got... Uh, I was going to say something and you derailed my train of thought. Thanks a lot. I was just helping. Uh-huh. Oh, my trying to help you. You've got healers. Um, you've got people who do mostly, like, artisan work. It, there's, there's just a lot. Fingernail girl is an artisan. Okay. <laughs> of a kind. Okay. What was her name? She has a stall, but people rarely stop at it. <laughs> the smell alone keeps them away. <laughs> Jesus. What was her name again? It started with an M, didn't it? Fingernail girl. God. <laughs> what was it, like Myrtle or something? No, I don't know. God. I think I made her interesting, despite your best efforts. <laughs> I just... imagine her talking like Moaning Myrtle. <laughs> Hello. Just stop. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> but when I say there's probably lots of social jobs, what I mean is there would be people who would be responsible for helping Clementine uh, map out what houses should go where, how to accommodate different kinds of people with different kinds of talents, how to arrange the city such that you didn't have enclaves where certain people didn't feel welcome, uh, like, while at the same time, you know, trying indeed to facilitate people who have never really been allowed to have a thriving community to have that community. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Matt said, wasn't that the job of the council, city planning? Yes, but, you know, 
A town or city council doesn't do all the work themselves. They're the top tier. Then you have the secondary and tertiary jobs who go in and actually do everything, who help implement, you know, all these things. Um, oh, but there was another question. Let me find it. Brother Nerd says, did Clementine personally build the majority of the houses herself? I'm sure that some who had the magic would have built their own. That's a good question, and I run the risk of spoiling a thing. Well, I don't. I think you've already shown that she didn't build them all herself because Pidge talks about it as a point of pride that she built it herself. Their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, your two statements just contradicted each other. You said you, like, repeat what you just said. No, because like. If she built all of them, why would he mention, like, yeah, she built this herself, like, it's special. If It wouldn't be special if she had built them all, is what I'm saying. Oh, I get, well... He says it like <clears throat> it's unique. That really wasn't the... That wasn't really the tone I was going for when I wrote it. It was more like a point of pride, like, hey, my friend built this, not, hey, it's special that she built this. Mm -hmm. To him, she's not famous. I mean... She's famous, but, you know, he's not in awe of her. He's he's known her since she was, you know, six. So, five, six, right around. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> um, no, Clementine did not build all of the houses in Eden. She helped to modify quite a few things, though. Lara's editing things on Dropbox and it's making little pop-ups. <laughs> Be mindful of spoilers, Lara. <clears throat> Are you talking to Sarah too? No. <clears throat> this was supposed to be an easy wallpaper. And then you had to go and draw trees. At 11, no matter what, I'm going to have to stop and move on to the next mm -hmm. live draw. So if I don't get this done in time, it will still be posted eventually. But you've got two hours, so yeah, I think you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. The thing about designing wallpapers is that it's not a good idea to make every single inch of them super detailed or something that the person would want to see because mm -hmm. there's always going to be icons yeah. and things littering all over it. So I try to make half of it like the main core of the picture and at least one fourth or half of it be something that could be covered with icons and not be losing the main feel of the picture. So this tree is taking up most of that part. But it also needs to be not fugly enough that it could be a print. Mm -hmm. so it's a fine line.
sleepy. I want to go to the gym. Gym. Oh. Wounded brontosaurus noises. Oh, we can't tonight. They're only open till nine. <laughs> it's Friday. Here, let's do this. Let's go in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> The other night, Ash and I went to the gym at like midnight to 1 a.m. and it was delightful. There was nobody there and they even let Ash use the massage chair, which she hated. I hated it so much. But she's not supposed to get to use the massage chair because she's not a black card holder like me. Hmm. I get to use it whenever I like. As well as the heated egg machine that you sit and you roast inside and it vibrates your body mm. and the hydro massage, which I also really enjoy. I have not tried the tanning beds. <clears throat> I'm kind of scared of them. But they have free tanning beds as well. I would be a lot more vocally supportive of Planet Fitness if somebody who works there hadn't just stolen my water bottle <laughs> that was in the Lost and Found. So that's kind of put a dampener on my... A dampener? A damper. A damper. A diaper on my enthusiasm. <laughs> God, Eleanor. <laughs> You trying to wake yourself up? No. Oh. <laughs> That is a good question. Um, Flame says, if Fernamare was still there, would Ka would Catherine even let Claire go to the Bright Night Festival? Well, I mean, Fernamare is still there. Like. The two are kind of unrelated troubles. Like, Bright Night is not at Fernamare. Yeah. I'm not really sure what the correlation is meant to be. Yeah, maybe I'm just misunderstanding. Then again, I don't know that we've actually mentioned anything about where Bright Night is supposed to be, but it's not meant to be at Throne of Mare. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, here's also something else. Sefi says, I wonder, if Throne of Mare was still standing, would Clementine still have the reputation of the Horned One? Uh, well, I mean, if you mean if the city was still thriving. There's always people who hated her. I'm sure there were people who called her the Horned One even before that happened. It Probably. just became a lot more widespread after <clears throat> it became fashionable to hate her. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Sefi said, yeah, if the city was still not ultra dead. Yeah, well, I don't know if, if she would have like a very widespread negative reputation. I think it would depend on what point in time you asked. And of course, if Eden was still around. Um, to be honest, in any realm where Eden fell, it's extraordinarily likely that Throne of Mare fell too. So, well, I mean, if Eden didn't fall, she'd still be around to be salvaging her own reputation. So. Well, yeah, but I mean, Clementine can still be known as whatever the heck, alive or dead. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so if Throne of Mare was still around, and let's say, let's say that Throne of Mare was still around and Eden was also still around in the present day. Like, in terms of, you know, at, at this particular point in time, however many years in the future, like uh, 22 years in the future, 23-ish, 22. <laughs> Let's go with 22, gentlemen. And, uh, <laughs> um, oh, speaking of the word gentlemen, I saw a meme that has been stuck in my head for days. It was a meme that referenced a leaf as an extremely crunchy gentleman <laughs> or an exceptionally crunchy gentleman. <laughs> and I thought it was really funny. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> Matt says, weren't people against her while she was alive? Yes. Yes, they were. Some rather more vocally than others. If Clementine had been given a little more time, things would have been a lot different. I don't really think she would have had a widespread reputation as the Horned One. I do think that no matter what point in time you look at Clementine from the perspective like of the entirety of everyone else. I'm sure you would find some people who did not like her. But if she'd been given a little bit more time, she would have been able to change some, some opinions that were very crucial to the longevity of her good reputation. Why does she run like she's running out of time, like she's running out of time? <laughs> Laura tells me it's 23 years since Eden fell, so I was right at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Every 12 hours. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Even a broken ash is right. <laughs> hey, hey, I said 23 and then I went back to 22. It was close enough, okay? Close enough. <clears throat> Sefi says, would the bridge have made that difference? Or maybe something we haven't seen? The bridge would have gone a long way toward changing some particular opinions, yes. I don't know if they would have all been positive necessarily, though. No, but there's, there's one opinion in particular I'm thinking of. Hmm. But there's a reason that Throne of Mare likes to keep up giant walls and... That's because they like to keep certain people in certain places. Yes, true. And that's one of the big differences between Eden and Throne of Mare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brother Nerd says, another question, are there in effect freshwater drifters? I'm going to field that one to Laura because I don't know. Has Laura thought about it? <laughs> Flame asks two questions. How long has the group been away from the Abbey and will they ever go back? 
Laura, again, <laughs> how long has the group been away from the Abbey? Our timekeeper. Um, it's been it's been a few months. Rosie says it in the last page. Does she? Well, she I mean, says she months. doesn't say a specific time, but she says literal months. Yeah, it's been a while. You can you can. Uh, there's another time marker. Um, when Lupo is sent on his quest, it is mentioned that Bright Knight is supposed to be in six months. Hopefully I have just not... Yeah. Oh, oh, I knew it. <laughs> Laura was like, yeah, but that changed. Sorry, sorry. Ignore me. Listen to Laura. Listen to Laura. She says that the group has been away from the Abbey for about five months. Okay. <clears throat> See, Laura has got this timeline down to the months... It's been really helpful. If only I could remember it for five seconds. Uh, that's why she's made a nice handy-dandy chart. But I'm staring at Ellen a drawing right now and being kind of useless. <laughs> um, sorry. It's not in six months anymore. Oops. <laughs> Matt says it still says six months. We'll change it. There's a lot of edits that need to be made to book, too. Yeah, Laura also went through and... Uh, compiled a list of edits for book two. We haven't gotten to those yet. I'm sure uh, when Elena and I go through, we'll find even more. Hopefully this time it'll be mostly text edits and not art edits. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Good questions, y'all. <laughs> there are freshwater selkies, but they're extremely rare. There's only a couple species of freshwater seal. <laughs> I've looked this up. I've spent so long going down rabbit holes on Wikipedia, um, <laughs> reading about pinnipeds and <laughs> non-pinnipeds and all these various seal-esque creatures. What is a pinniped? Uh, pinniped, like, isn't it, doesn't it mean like a seal without ears? Or like, pinniped. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's like the difference between sea lions and seals. Yeah. Pinnipeds, commonly known as seals, are a widely distributed and diverse clad of carnivorous, fin-footed, semi-aquatic marine mammals. <laughs> we'll do all... Pinnipeds have seals? You mean ears? So, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, Technically, huh. seals have ears, they just don't have the flaps. Yeah, pinnipeds have streamlined, spindle-shaped bodies with reduced or non-existent external ear flaps. Okay. Rounded heads, flexible necks, limbs modified into flippers, and small tails. Oh. Oh god, I did not know that. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, it's a skeleton of your favorite, Elena. An oh elephant seal. Mm 
Hmm. Flame asks, odd question, but how much does Clementine weigh? So, not very much. Um, probably, I mean, I'm sure she's, also, that really depends at what point in your life, uh, in, in her life, you're measuring her. Um, she was probably at her beefiest <laughs> when she was uh, still a Helsing Noviet. Now, well, now she's dead. So. Now she's dead. When she was older and managing Eden, um, she lost a bit of that muscle mass. She also lost an arm. Well, in a way, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, not very much. Probably around what Clara weighs. A little less. So what about her horns, though? Her horns are only heavy to her. To others, they are almost entirely weightless. Like, Magpie can has been shown to be able to pick her up. Mm -hmm. uh, others have been able to pick her up. Like, when she's had big horns. <clears throat> hmm. Seffi said, Goodbye, Clem Arm. Did it fall off or is it still there and moved by vines? The latter. There are probably some times where she wants to chop it off. <laughs> you useless thing, I can imagine. If she takes the vines off, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a rubber chicken. She can disgust people with it. Uh, hey, Catherine, watch this. Catherine's like, <laughs> <laughs> Ellen is joking, by the way. <laughs> Ellen is joking. Or am I? She doesn't have a rubber arm. <laughs> the bones inside it withered away. It makes these floppy, juicy noises when she waves it around. Uh, could we not? That's so funny. I'm laughing at people in the chat. Um, <clears throat> Brother Nerd says, prior to Clementine, was there an established day for the new year? If so, did it start randomly in the middle of a season, like for us, or at the beginning of one? Um, like, Great Night's not really like a change of season. No, it's just Clementine's birthday. Which, to be fair, we have never mentioned, so. I think we've answered the question in previous live draws. We should say it in the comic, though. Yeah, we will. <clears throat> My spy. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> 
<laughs> Sefi said, would it be celebrated if she was alive? Um, I had always had canon that they did have bright night celebrations even when she was alive and that she had made some of the traditions, but I think they've changed since she died. Yeah. I'm sure that especially like certain people in the city would have wanted to throw her a party and Clementine would have not been able to, you know, <laughs> not invite everybody else. So it probably turned into a big thing. When you think, too, of the kind of community that Eden was, like, can't you imagine that people would have tried to come together to celebrate absolutely anything? I think. But also to show their appreciation for her for mm -hmm. making it for them. Yeah. I think even if she had been like, okay, but try to keep it low key, it would still. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, that's what Seppi just said. Would she be like, nah, that's weird. I'm a normal person. Cut that shit out. Um, I don't think she would have told people not to do it. I think she would have been a little bit sheepish. Um, <laughs> if she got hints about it, she'd be like, okay, but. Don't make it too flashy. They end up making it the flashiest. <laughs> yeah, she's like, they invite Hanabi to do the fireworks. <laughs> and she's, poor Clementine's just like, ah, oh, well. <laughs> I think that she would be like, you guys said, but at the same time be like, wow, well, this is the best birthday party I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'd be excited. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, at the end of the day, she's a kid, you know? What she kid would really say no to a lavish birthday party? I mean, I think she would say no to lavish gifts, but she would really enjoy, like, everyone having a good time. I could even see her, like, saying yes to lavish gifts if they were, you know, useful things or things she actually wanted. Maybe. Like, somebody could bring her <clears throat> something, I don't know what it would be, and she could be like, oh no, that's too much, I couldn't possibly, and they're like okay, well, it's, you know, monogrammed with your name, so I guess I'll have to just burn it. And she's like, well, if it's going to waste. <laughs> like, <laughs> wouldn't want to, you know, just throw it away. You put so much work into that embroidery. I mean, <laughs> if you insist, but... <sighs> Catherine rolling her eyes. <laughs> and saying to... Gabby, she's not very good at pretending not to be excited by these presents. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think presents that Clementine would have enjoyed more than anything would have been books, uh, clothes tailored such that she didn't have to try to fit them over her horns. <laughs> uh, like she would really appreciate people making her things that actually address the fact that she's not a normal person and I don't mean that in the sense of you know she is Clementine the Great and Powerful I mean in the sense of with her special needs in mind yeah exactly she would really appreciate it if a lot of people didn't suddenly want her to give a, a giant speech. Um. <laughs> At her birthday parties, everybody immediately starts clinking on their glasses. Speech, speech, speech. And she's like, you've got, got, got to be f f f fucking kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> like, we'll be here all, all night. <laughs> Oh my god. Seppi said, happy birthday, Clementine, I got you a cat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She'd be like, oh, I can't accept this. You see, I already have an angry little feline child. <laughs> Grim immediately starts making murder plans. I think Grim would actually like other cats quite a mm -hmm. bit. Um, and Clementine would accept cats. I don't think Grim would like other cats <clears throat> if they become Clementine's cats. Because I think, I think Grim would be like, I am her cat. I don't think Grimm really sees themselves as, a, like, just a cat, though. I think the differentiation is pretty obvious. Um, we, need, we're, we need to show them more in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I have had thoughts about it. Um, Laura said, 
Here's a question. What did she do with, the pro with that prosthetic when she was putting on clothes with sleeves? Did she just rip out all of her right sleeves, or did she have to pull the vines uh, out and on again every time she dressed? What? The vines that... They're, they're on her arm. Like, why would she have to take them off? The vine? Yeah. I mean, I guess vines could definitely run under a sleeve. Yeah. Why yeah. Not? I don't remember if I designed them with twigs coming out. Maybe I did. Or, I mean... She could always fix those, though. They could also run over the sleeve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Arwen Trous, don't talk to me or my demon cat son ever again. <laughs> Hmm. Sefi said, here's a thing. The vines might need sunlight. I mean, like, I don't think Clementine's going to keep all of her vines hidden under a giant cloak or anything. And these are not your typical vines. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie said, was my silly question answered? No, I was waiting for you to come back. Um, <laughs> Jamie said... Let me find it. It was a funny question. Hmm. How different would Clementine's life have been if she was three feet taller or shorter? If she was three feet shorter, she would have been uh, an honorary... By Yolanda. I was going to say, been an honorary goblin and would have stayed with Yolanda forever. If she was three feet taller... Uh, wow, talk about a very intimidating silhouette. <laughs> How tall would that put her? Mm. I mean, seven Six. feet, right? Right at seven feet tall. So right at Zora's height. Yeah. <clears throat> Matt said Zora tall. Yeah, she pretty up there. Hmm. Someone asked earlier what kind of traditions are, like, noticeable during Bright Night. What do you think, Elena? Well, we're going to expand on that. I don't know that we really want to reveal yeah. it right now. Mm hmm That's a good question. <laughs> mm, I'm tired also. Mm. I'm so tired. Don't sleep yet. Mm. Got a little more to go. <clears throat> I know, I know. Mm. Really good questions tonight, y'all. Mm -hmm. Aw, that's a nice comment, Matt. He says, I like how everything leans toward the focus of the wallpaper. You do a great job with composition, Elena. Oh, thank you, Matt. I think I've been doing it so long that it starts to come kind of naturally to try to lead everything towards one direction, especially having, you know, mostly doing comic panels and having to lead people's eye to the panels in the right order. But I'm glad that it's noticed. Hmm. Oh, that is a good question, Matt said. Were there ever any abbeys in Eden? Yes. And not just abbeys. There was something I wanted to show in those big splash pages that Elena did of Eden recently. One of my ideas was to show like a close-up of more of the buildings and make it very obvious what some of them were. 
Um, but we kind of ran out of time and we decided on other things. <laughs> Isn't it, are we switching at 10 or at 11? Um, it might be 10 actually. Uh, let's see. I think it is 10. It was originally 9 of 11. Then we moved it to 8 and 10. Let me see. Yeah. You're right. You're right. So I may have to wrap this up in a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Budgie said, if there's an Eden, is there a creation myth in the Sister Claire universe? I mean, I'm pretty sure there are bits and bobs left over from all sorts of religions from the old world. And you know, with them plenty of other creation myths. But Eden on its own does still stand as, you know, a sanctuary, a paradise. Draw this on the wrong layer. Hmm. Matt thinks that the uh, the nice carpenter guy reference was meant as a cheeky Easter egg. No, I mean, like I just said, I think there are things left over from old religions. Some of them more prominent and more believed than others. Brother Nerd is right in that, like, at least in uh, former iterations of the story, they do have the Bible and, like, they reference it. We might take that stuff out or at least kind of uh, tone it down a tiny bit. <clears throat> but we'll see. We're not worried about it that much. Hmm. Now, this is a story I don't know. Uh, Proxy says, did Clementine ever consider having someone else speak for her, like a Moses and Aaron type deal? I don't know what you're referencing. Laura, help me. <laughs> uh, Aaron was his sister, right? I've seen the Prince of Egypt. Aaron, uh, no, Aaron was his brother. Oh, his brother. Of course, they his, didn't make a woman be important. His sister was Miriam. Oh, that's right. You're right. Yeah. Voiced by Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm. There can be miracles when you believe. When you believe. Oh, oh my God. No <laughs> hope is frail. It's hard to kill. Oh, Laura is explaining. In the original story, uh, he was sort of a speak spokesperson for Moses. Moses was kind of a shy guy. So Aaron was more out there talking to the masses. Oh, okay. Well, Clementine didn't really like it when people spoke for her. The only person she would have really uh, wanted to do that would have been Gabby. I don't know that Gabby would have been a reliable reteller. Not because she wouldn't have wanted to be, but... I was thinking more in the sense of, like, Clementine doing the finger language and Gabby translating for her. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't I don't think Clementine would have... Um, like, really sent people out in terms of... She definitely sent people out to, like, invite others to Eden. Um, and, you know, would want, like, I mean, she sent members of the flock out to do that. People who could fly. That's entirely how Hana found Eden. Um, she probably would have ended up there anyway. However, 
<clears throat> I don't think Clementine endorsed, like, people speaking for her personally, unless it unless they were people that, you know, she knew intimately. Um, I think plenty of people tried to speak for her anyway. Aw, oh, Alex says, I asked you some advice during a live draw about ending a story, and it really helped. I'm now 40 pages into my comic. Aw. That's excellent. We would love to see your comic. Mm -hmm. You should link it in the chat. <laughs> Flame made uh, Clementine into a gym. Oh, cool. Oh, it's cute. Mm -hmm. I love it. Good job. Thank you. And I have to think about what kind of poem to draw. Yeah. So we'll be uh, we'll be stopping the live draw pretty soon to do the not safe for work live draw. In that case, um, if anyone has, you know, questions that they want answered, you know, since we are going to start wrapping up soon, you better go ahead and ask them. Brother Nerd asks, how do you think Clementine would have reacted to hearing about Shinto from a practitioner? How do you mean? <laughs> Sefi asks, how's Ozzy dealing with being in the new Bright Ones entourage? She's, I mean, I think she really likes Clementine. Um, Ozzy. Ozzy. She doesn't know Clementine. I mean, excuse me, Claire. Sorry, sorry. She really likes uh, Claire and enjoys hanging out with everybody. Um, I think she thinks the twins are pretty funny and... Enjoys Rosie's company, even if Rosie's kind of a grouch right now. Uh, <laughs> I did a live write with them pseudo recently that I enjoyed very much. Um, hmm. Ozzy doesn't have nearly the same kind of worshipy attitude toward Clementine that her brother does. Claire, Claire, not Clementine. Jesus. Um, although that's applicable too, like. Hearing stories about Clementine does not fill Ozzy with much awe. Um, you don't think so? I think she would have been really interested in meeting her and, and would probably wish that, you know, she had been alive when Eden was a thing. But in her opinion, especially now, it was a young girl who died. It sucks. But I think that she would be, like, also in awe of her because, like, her mom was on the council. She would have heard all kinds of cool stories about her. I don't think it would be something that she just... Then again, maybe she does not know that. She might not know it. That's something we should think about and talk about. She might not know how important her mom was in the grand scheme of things. Why wouldn't her mom tell her? 
uh, because children really do like to let things slip and that's a really big deal. I think I should wrap this up so that I have a chance to try to figure out what I'm going to draw before I start the next live draw. But thank you all so much for coming. It was really nice to talk to you guys again and to see the beautiful fan art that was drawn just in the time that I've been working on this. And you all asked really good questions. I'm not just saying it. They were really good. Anything to add, Ash? Budgie is asking, um, is there a reason why you guys have been live drawing a little less lately? Like, it was more than once a month, right? And now it's just monthly? Well, we normally try to do at least two live draws a month. Uh, sometimes we're, you know, not able to do as many. Uh, sometimes we do more. It really does vary month to month. And... Last month we had to postpone a couple things, so... We were in Iceland. Yeah, we were in Iceland. Not only, we ran out of time to do certain things, and sometimes we feel like it's better to postpone and make it up later rather than try to do something when we're all really rushed or if, you know, there's just not enough time, Ellen is not feeling it. Uh, we've scheduled only half of this month so far. Like, I have... Um, a trip coming up myself not next week but the week after so I won't be around that's why I'm you know trying to get most of my live rights and stuff out of the way earlier in the month um, and when I come back we'll probably do a couple more live draws with that being said with that being said we shall sing good night yeah good night good night Good night, good night.